Okie dokie, so this is by far the most requested paleontology video review that I do. Anyway, thank you, <laughs> enjoy this video, I guess. The dinosaur clips in this video are from documentaries you can find on CuriosityStream. More on them at the end of the video. This is actually quite nice here, but uh, it's the dinosaur tier list, come on. Now, from what I heard of, this is supposed to be a game of some sort. So, I'm going to go easy mode on him, alright? And so today I think it's finally time to release my dinosaur tier list. Obviously there's a ton of dinosaur builds, so there's no way I can cover all of them, but I definitely will try to hit the important ones. It's worth noting that the reign of the dinosaur faction lasted more than twice as long as the reign of the mammal faction that supplanted them. And so during this huge stretch of time, dinosaur maids basically tried out every conceivable strategy, and that's why there are so many builds to talk about. But as always, we'll start from the bottom of the tier list and move up from there. At the bottom we've got Dryosaurus and Camptosaurus. The game just treats those poor Dryosaurus and Camptosaurus so badly, man. They should be treated better than this. Two very similar herbivore builds with an interesting stat spread. Dinosaurs are known for their immense strength, but neither of these builds boast any sort of offensive capabilities. Now I'm just going to assume the game treats them so badly that they don't even give them self-defense capabilities. These guys are capable of self-defense, they could just kick you or something. Instead they have a modest but below average defensive spread. Their power should be much higher decent mobility, and above average intelligence for a dinosaur. These builds took advantage of how powerful the other herbivore builds were by sticking by the bulkier ones and relying on them to defend the herd. That would be a really stupid idea. Those herbivores are just going to threaten to kill them as well. I mean, I mean, these Dryosaur, Camptosaurs, they can still defend themselves without, you know, Stekosaurs help or something. Actually, no, they just simply hide or something. Against some smaller predators, they are very capable of just hurting them really bad with their kicks and stuff. They also took advantage of the fact that they were faster than other herbivores, even though their mobility was lower than most predator builds. Their higher intelligence granted them more advanced perception, letting them function as the herd lookouts. But nonetheless, these builds were helpless on their own, and were easy targets for predator mains if they were ever caught undefended. Their lack of self-sufficiency puts them in F tier, in my opinion. Now. In my opinion, I would definitely put them in around C tier. Like, they definitely aren't very threatening, and uh, they are easy prey, but uh, they still won't. They, they still aren't as easy of a prey as you think. They can still defend themselves and all that. I think they realize this, though, because later on, this faction started specking into either extra armor on their heads or spikes on their thumbs giving them much better options for dealing with aggressive players. In D tier, we've got two carnivore builds, the first being Coelophysis. Coelophysis was one of the first dinosaur builds that the devs introduced. They should have a little bit of feathering as well, you know. And like all of the early dinosaurs, it really was nowhere near the power level of the ones that would be added to the game later in the Jurassic and Cretaceous expansions. Oh, so this guy is treating dinosaurs as a game. Um, okay then. The only reason it became such a popular and dominant build was because it starved and dehydrated more slowly than its non-dinosaur rivals. And this isn't to say that it didn't struggle to succeed too. It absolutely did, and often had to resort to team killing just to get by. There was no team, there was just gang killing, and they, and they were able to survive for a bit because they were able to eat small lizard-like animals. Also, Coelophysis lived in the Triassic. Betrayal. It sort of dominated the early dino meta by default, so I'm not going to rate it any higher than D tier. Also in D tier, we have Spinosaurus. Dude, are you a Spino anti or something? Put it in like high C or low B. Actually, a B, B tier is good for Spino because Spino is still quite powerful and all. But, uh, no, I, I, I'm... Okay, okay. I don't know where to rank Spinosaurus, to be honest. I, I, I'm trying to follow, I'm trying to base my opinions on facts here, but, uh, I don't know if B tier is a bit biased for the Spinosaurus. I don't know, I don't know, to be honest. Spinosaurus is a unique build that specced heavily into fishing abilities and aquatic adaptations, 
including the rare ability of Electro. Ah, of course, they're showing the outdated 2009 thing. At least show something like a 2018 model of Spinosaurus, that's fine. Deception, which helped it catch fish players even when they were in stealth mode. This is great for that specific application, but Spinosaurus mains weren't actually fully aquatic, they couldn't breathe underwater, and still had to spend plenty of their gameplay dealing with the challenges of being a terrestrial build. And unfortunately, their stats and abilities leave a lot to be desired in terms of contending with the terrestrial meta at that time. Actually, does this tier list even fit at all? Okay, Spino didn't even compete with Kakarodonosaurus because they served different niches. That is why they were able to coexist peacefully. Because they'd spent so many evolution points adapting their build to be able to fish, they'd secured themselves a unique niche at the cost of being able to hold their own in general combat. Because they don't really need to, unless, you know, Planet Dinosaur demonstrated that pretty well. Spino and Kakar and stuff. And also, Spino could use its hand claws to... Spino could just slash around its hand claws... You know, not, not slash, flash around its head claw... Not, not, no, 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 no. I'm, what am I doing? Flash around its hand claws to intimidate predators... No, not, not to, oh my god, what am I even, what am I even saying right now? Okay, okay, Spinosaurus try, Spinosaurus likely used its hand claws reared up it, it, to try and intimidate anything that tries to attack it. Okay, that's what I'm trying to say. They'd get bodied by most other carnivore mains and outsped by most herbivore mains, leaving them in an awkward position. If they'd had more time, they might have been able to gain enough experience to spec into a fully aquatic build. But unfortunately, the devs decided to up the overworld temperature, raising the sea levels but drying up the rivers, leaving the Spinosaurus player base without a niche. The lesson here is that if you ever find yourself specking into the playstyle of an amphibian, you may want to reconsider how you're spending your evolution points. Last in D tier, we have the Hadrosaurs. Dude, Hadrosaurs should be placed in A tier at least. They are going to absolutely batter your butt if you don't leave them alone. Now, I don't have a ton to say about these builds. Generally, their main game plan is pretty simple. See a predator coming and run away. And then if a predator gets too close, they will try and use their body as as their defense. Like, they're, they're kicking and maybe even a little bit of a tail whip right there. And they could even bite their predators uh, in the name of self-defense. This is pretty similar to the Dryosaurus and Camptosaurus playstyle I mentioned in F-Tier, but instead of relying on the more powerful herbivores to defend them, they had the HP required to shrug off a hit or two, and actually had the mobility required to escape, assuming they saw the attack coming. Overall, this build was pretty easy to play, but had a low skill ceiling as well, since they had no actual combat abilities. Yes, they do. They kick and stampede, and they use their heads to defend themselves as well. Yeah. You know, Hadrosaurs, they, they are just... Come on, Hadro Hadrosaurs, man. They they could be some of the most aggressive ag aggressive animals to have ever lived. Like, herbivores are notoriously known for being extremely aggressive, like rhinos and whatnot. You know, Hadrosaurs, they are herbivores. They will be extremely aggressive if you uh, don't leave them alone. They'll just crush you with their immense weight, yada yada yada. It's just unfair. Even even the biggest even the biggest predators like the T-Rex wouldn't want to mess around with uh, with something like a Montosaurus <laughs> without even thinking. Like they have to think twice before attacking these giant aggressive dudes. All in all, there's a reason players consider hadrosaurs more forgettable among dinosaur builds. In C tier, we've got two of the most famous Jurassic builds. The first is Stegosaurus. I probably put it at B tier. Actually, now that I think about it, Spino kind of deserves a place in like high B or low A because Spino was still really strong. I don't know, maybe I'm biased here again. I'd put Spino in B. Taking a quick look at the Stegosaurus stats, it's clear that this build was extreme on many fronts. It had one of the lowest intelligence levels of any dinosaur, and also didn't exactly have much in terms of mobility either. However, it had pretty incredible combat stats and powerful abilities to back it up. Most notably, its backplates and thagomizer. 
Their backplates significantly reduce the chance of an attacker scoring a critical hit against them, since it's much harder to bite down on a Stegosaurus' weak point when there are plates in the way. Their backplates can also be flushed with blood to grant a large intimidation buff, which works great against Predator and herbivore mains alike. It's good that this dude recognizes that not all herbivores are defenseless, but uh, partially. It's still not good enough. Like, every animal is capable of self-defense, even pigs, capybaras, and even rabbits. <laughs> the Thagomizer is one of the most unique weapons of any dinosaur build. The Thagomizer has one of the highest critical hit chances of any weapon in the game, often dealing enough damage to one-shot most players. Because it's a tail spike, this attack has a lot of reach, making approaching a defending Stegosaurus player extremely difficult. However, the strategy was by no means perfect. Their low mobility made fleeing from battle impossible, so if an enemy did not have to subvert its defenses, Stegosaurus mains would be out of options. And since their tails weren't long enough to cover an attack from the front, that was often their downfall. Thankfully, their base game plan was relatively simple, so their low intelligence didn't hinder them too much. Stegosaurs in B tier seems appropriate, but uh, we're, we're if Stegosaurs in B tier, we're gonna need we're gonna need to put Ankies in S tier because <laughs> Ankies are just way upgraded versions. No, 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 can't compare those. Also in C tier, we have every Stegosaurus main's arch enemy, Allosaurus. The Allosaurus build was unique in that it actually invested very little into the bite attack, only having the bite strength of a lion. Instead, Allosaurus dealt damage by using its head like a battle axe. Disproven, and no modern theory, no modern theory was made to replace this. Swinging its open jaw down onto an enemy player. This dealt heavy damage but was nowhere near the devastating power of some of the top tier dinosaur combat moves. Allosaurus in C tier seems fair. But Soar of Fakinax needs to be in, like, high B. Uh, high B means B+. Plus. Uh, B, B+. Plus. Maybe B. B+, plus or B, for Soar of Fakinax. If the hatchet theory is real, of course. Allosaurus being in C tier seems appropriate. Soar of Fakinax around B. B-. Minus. I don't know. But, you know, hatchet theory is just not... It's just not viable anymore. Oh, Sora Fagonix can still be in B because of its slashing teeth. It had the highest top speed of any build during its time, but had relatively low stamina, meaning it could only sprint for a short time, also similar to lions today. While one-on-one, -on -one, Allosaurus tended to get bodied by the stronger herbivore players of its time, in packs that could take- Dude, does this guy have Americano virus? ...down just about anything. Overall, a solid mid-tier, whose strategies got expanded upon and refined by the later dinosaur builds. In B tier, we have a few builds which did the exact opposite of what Allosaurus did, in that they put a ton of evolution points into a single combat tactic. First, the build which specced into the claw skill tree, granting it the longest claws to ever exist in the game, Therizinosaurs. Therizinosaurs were excellent in 1v1 combat, because their claws gave them incredible reach and damage. That's a funky looking Therizinosaur you got there. Perfect for slicing at the heads of carnivore mains that were trying- Did the Dromaeosaur try to use its sickle claws? to try and disembowel the Therizinosaur to bite them. Their slash attack was the strongest the game had ever seen. In fact, they put so many points into the claw skill tree that they had none left over for teeth or mobility and were actually forced to change teams from the carnivore side to the herbivore side, making them the only build from the theropod faction to opt not to be a predator. This actually worked out really well for them because they no longer had to compete with the other predator mains for XP, and were also taller than most herbivore players typically seen in the forest biomes, Sure, they were lacking in intelligence and mobility, and also couldn't actually gain any experience from the enemies that they defeated with their claws, but all in all, they had a surprisingly effective strategy. Not a perfect defense, as they were definitely still vulnerable to coordinated assaults, but definitely an above average build. Now, B tier seems reasonable. They, their claws make them very capable in close combat. However, the problem is that their necks are quite thin and vulnerable to predator attack. Uh, and also, coordinated attack, dude. Dude, when will you stop with those... When will you stop with those pack hunting dudes for once? Anyway, it's Therese and the Sores. They, they have very vulnerable necks that, uh, that, uh, are, that could get crushed by a predator's attack. That's, yeah, so... The problem is not coordinated pack hunting, 
But because but the but the Therizinosaurus is vulnerable neck. So yeah. On the opposite end of the spectrum from Allosaurus and Therizinosaurus, both of which had either weak or non-existent bite damage, we have the carnivore build that puts all of its evolution points into maxing out the bite attack, the Tyrannosaurus Rex. T-Rex. Tyrannosaurus Rex. Tyrannosaurus. Put it in S tier, and I'm not even biased. The T-Rex is strong, smart, has a, an extremely strong bite, has binocular vision, great senses, very agile, and, uh, yeah, actually, I don't know, T-Rex, at least, uh, between A and S, I don't know, to be honest, I don't want to sound like a T-Rex fan, I'm trying to base my opinions on facts, please, uh, what's your opinions down below, I don't know, but, uh, I'll try and base my opinions on, of course, Facts! Again! Bruh! T-Rex had the most powerful bite attack in the history of the game, able to take out any player it was able to bite in a single hit. This also gave it the ability to crush bone, letting it access the XP-rich marrow inside, similar to what hyenas do in today's meta. T-Rex was a hybrid between a predator and scavenger build. It didn't have the greatest luck taking down the heavily armored herbivores of the Cretaceous expansion, but it could certainly defeat them if the T-Rex players worked in a group. And as a scavenger, its massive size gave it the ability to dis- Ah, uh, Valley of the T-Rex, where Jack Horner constantly bullied T-Rex for the entirety of the documentary. On the plus side, the dude in the video recognizes the T-Rex is both a predator and a scavenger when it needed to be. Steal kills from other And of course, there's this pack hunting shenanigans and all that. One of our players, who had no hope of surviving its devastating bite if they got in its way. T-Rex did, however, have to sacrifice all of its other offensive strength in order to maximize its bite damage. Its arms were so short that its claw attack had pathetic range. Stop joking about the T-Rex's sh small arms! They don't- they- God, God. They don't even need those arms in order to hunt. They only needed to use their heads. Also, their arms can still be used to prevent other T-Rexes from biting them and they're also quite strong. Making them useless both for holding prey and fighting rivals for territory. This is just so stupid. Instead, those ar those small arms were actually good for the T-Rex. And it also wasn't particularly fast outside of short bursts of speed. So if players saw it coming, which wasn't that hard because of its massive size, they wouldn't have too tough a time avoiding it. Still, with team strats, it was near unstoppable and it always had the option to fall back on scavenging. So it was definitely a solid high tier. The last B tier build I want to talk about is Triceratops. S tier. Not even the biggest predators want to mess around with them. They'll just simply get impaled by those meter long horns. And also Triceratops is quite agile as well. In terms of defense in a single direction, no build has ever come close to Triceratops. Their horns can deal massive damage in a single swing, even to giant carnivore builds like T-Rex. Looking at its stats, it's pretty clear that going head to head with this thing would end badly. However, one thing I've noticed is that players nowadays fail to remember its main drawback, low intelligence. Does it even need to have intelligence when it could just simply gore on a T-Rex? <laughs> and either way, bro, Jesus, Jesus. The Triceratops, the Triceratops meter long horns. They're just unstoppable. I'm not saying Triceratops wins every time. Triceratops still loses a couple matches. Uh, Triceratops still loses 30% of the time against a T-Rex. However, Triceratops can just simply impale the T-Rex 70% of the time. This thing was pretty close to a modern day opossum in terms of brain power. And as many of you should know from my Australia video, marsupials are some of the least intelligent mammals. People assume Triceratops behaved similar to a modern-day elephant, since both are about the same size and sport powerful front-facing weaponry. But the elephants are way more intelligent, to the point where they are self-aware, they can paint stuff, you know, they can throw rocks, and they, they can also grief. Triceratops, nope, they, they cannot. Sorry. However, the herd behavior that makes elephants so untouchable by predators was absent in the Triceratops build as they were mostly solitary, and this was due to their low intelligence stat. Because of that, they were highly vulnerable from being attacked from behind, or from multiple angles at once. 
Triceratops' low intelligence also meant that it was easily tricked into walking into ambush. God, stop with all those pack hunting. Well, except with their T-Rex, but if it's a Dromaeosaur or a Trodontid, stop, stop, stop. It is set by carnivore mains, which pretty much always meant a game over for the Triceratops. As powerful as this build is, and it is powerful, don't get me wrong, I think it's definitely not a top tier dinosaur and caps out at B tier. Okay, so in A tier we've got the dinosaurs which were a bit smarter about how they invested their evolution points. First we have the Dromaeosaurs. I just put them in C tier or something. Like, they were dangerous, don't get me wrong, but uh, they don't hunt in packs. The most they could do is just kill, just the. Uh, just trying to feed on a larger dead dead dinosaur, larger dead animal in a feeding frenzy, just killing each other in the process. The faction of dinosaurs that includes builds like Velociraptor, Deinonychus, and Utah Raptor. These players made an interesting choice to forego the gigantism ability that made dinosaurs so dominant in the first place. Dude, what is this guy with pack hunting and all the? Yeah, the Tarbosaurus, the mightiest ever, is one of the is probably the worst dinosaur documentary, even worse than Clash of the Dinosaurs and Jurassic Fight Club. And try their hand at more of an evasive rushdown playstyle, sacrificing both their HP and defense stats to buff their mobility and DPS as best they could. Most notably, they spec'd into buffing a single claw on each foot, which has no one cares about the disemboweling theory anymore. Just like Mikhail the Komodo Dragon said, they caught small prey. They likely climb trees with it, or they could do a hypothetical method known as raptor prey restraint. Two important functions, the first being that it could deal massive slash and stab type damage, and the second being that it gave them the ability to hook onto players that they were targeting using the pounce attack. Overall, this build had- Dude, why did the Centosaurus not fight back at all? It just stood there, waiting for it- <laughs> waiting for the raptors to make it collapse! Wow! much higher damage than normal for a build that size, and could easily take down players in a much higher weight class, especially if they attacked in a group, which they often did. Suzu believing those dinosaurs can peck on for the 7 billion time. They had the ability to weave in and out of their opponent's attack range easily, letting them bait out and dodge attacks. But you know, they weren't fast runners in all those. How are they supposed to meet in a higher tier than the T-Rex itself? The one main drawback to this build was that if it ever got careless, they could easily take lethal damage in a single hit. But overall, this faction was one of the most successful at the time and easily A tier. Also in A tier, we have Carcharodonosaurus, a build very similar to T Rex in terms of appearance, but. Dude, when would you stop comparing everything to T Rex? With a slightly different plan of attack. Instead of investing purely into bite force, maxing out base damage, Carcharodonosaurus spent its evolution points specking into advanced, serrated teeth. This gave their bite attack an increased chance to cause the heavy bleed status effect, which would drain the target's HP and stamina over time. This was more cost effective than pure bite force, and let them retain enough evolution points to spec into claws too, giving them a more well-rounded combat style that could still cause lethal damage from a single bite. This strategy is similar to the one seen employed by the Komodo Dragon player base of today's meta. Except that Komodo Dragons pump anticoagulants into the, the victim's the victim's uh, blood, preventing it from clotting, causing the victim to slowly bleed out and die. The Carcharodontosaurus just simply uses its serrated teeth to uh, to try and slash at the victim, and the victim, and if it gets deep enough, the victim will slowly bleed out. It doesn't use anticoagulants. Carcharodonosaurus was also one of the tankier carnivore builds and could shrug off a hit or two even from the builds that would normally devastate anything that they landed a hit on. This made them extremely good at PvP against the other carnivore builds at the time, making them an easy high tier candidate. The next build I have in A tier is Ankylosaurus. S tier, not only because of their mass, their body armor, and their tail, but also because of their flat build, which makes them really hard to flip over. Perhaps the best tank build ever to exist in the game. This build essentially took the Segasaurus' strategy and cranked it up to the most extreme it could. Instead of backplates for intimidation, the Ankylosaur players spec'd into armor, and instead of tail spikes, they opted for a club. Their armor was so impenetrable that it made attacks from even the strongest carnivore mains pretty laughable. Yep, that's right. 
I'm glad that the dude recognizes Ankies as, as being as these living tanks that uh, that can take lots of hits and can also just whack him with a tail. While their club didn't have a high crit chance like the tail spikes did, it did do massive damage that could shatter bone, capable of crippling any player unfortunate to take a direct hit from it. Ankylosaurus was near invincible except that it had one glaring flaw. Despite all of its defense and power, it was completely helpless if a player managed to flip it over. For that reason, I can't place it in top tier, because a good top tier will have no surefire counterplay. Last in A tier, we have Troodon. Dude, it did not exist. And also, Troodontids, they aren't that smart. Now, the more I see the spoilers, we're gonna put Anki in A tier, T Rex in A tier, Triceratops also in A tier, um, Spino in maybe uh, low B tier, Hadrosaurs in A tier. We got Troodontids in like D tier, uh, and uh, Coelophysis is okay. D D tier is okay there. Dryasaur, Cantosaur around uh, D tier or something. Um, okay, so we got uh, Cacarodontosaurus. Um, Cacarodontosaurus should also be placed in high B. Uh, Dromaeosaurus put in C. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That that that's good. The Troodon build was the only dinosaur build whose core strategy was based around the intelligence stat. Sure, other dinosaurs used team strategies or had advanced perception skills, both of which require some usage of intelligence, but Troodon was the only one to specifically tailor their build around having its brain be its best weapon. Um, did it? No, no, no. Troodon had to sacrifice a lot to get this. High intelligence requires a lot of calories to maintain, so getting the kills required to sustain both a large size and a large brain was impossible. Yeah, at the time, because the Troodontids didn't really hunt large animals. Meaning that they had to give up gigantism as a trait. So instead of powerful dagger-like claws, Troodon opted for smaller but opposable claws that could be used to pick up objects. This severely cut its potential in combat, but gave it a lot of options in terms of manipulating its environment to, for example, set up traps to catch players that would otherwise be able to evade them. I don't think... In real life, I don't think the Troodon heads are smart enough to use their terrain to their advantage. It's very possible that if non-avian dinosaurs weren't banned in the Meteor Strike balance patch, Troodon players would have eventually leveled up their intelligence enough to become top tiers similar to humans. Which, after I realized that this theory is ridiculous, this theory is just absolutely ridiculous! But even though it was starting to gain the power to dominate its environment, it still had no way to combat the other top tiers aside from just running away, so it definitely wasn't S tier. In S tier, we have the most overpowered dinosaur faction of all, the sauropods. Well, yeah, the very large ones, like the Argentinosaurus, the Brachiosaurus, etc. Something like a Diplodocus would be on the edge, but still low S tier compared to the Brachiosaur and Argentinosaurus' high S tier. Sauropods had every tool they needed to counter all other dinosaur builds. The Tail Whip could, could hurt the sauropod. They had the maximum HP stat possible for a terrestrial build, and because they used the herd strategy, oftentimes this meant that if a sauropod player was caught off guard and was under attack by several carnivore players- Dude, why would a pack of dromaeosaurs- or Trudontids, I don't know. Why would a pack of small dinosaurs even dare to try and take down a big sauropod? It could usually tank enough hits that its teammates would have time to rescue it. And of all the dinosaurs, sauropods also had the largest attack range. Their whip-like tails may have not had the same damage per hit that Stegosaurus or Ankylosaurus did, but they were still plenty powerful, able to knock down enemies well out of reach of a counterattack. It's still going to hurt them. They they just simply use their feet to just in massive in massive weight to just crush their enemies. That's that's it. And if they did get too close, a sauropod stop attack was literally the most devastating move in the game, knocking the target down and dealing lethal damage. Lastly, their extreme height gave them a massive advantage for avoiding stealth attacks, as they could see much further than other players. In terms of land superiority, sauropods truly were the most overpowered dinosaurs of all time. It's unfortunate that the devs chose to ban the dinosaurs during the KT balance patch, but alas, the meta was getting stale, so I understand why. Alright, so, uh, yeah, that's...
pretty much it. I'm going to show you the last part here. This is just a little bit of filler, you know, because it's okay, I suppose. Hopefully you enjoy this look back at the Mesozoic meta. If you enjoy watching videos about dinosaurs, there are a bunch of great documentaries I can recommend. For example, if you're curious about Troodon and why it was the smartest dinosaur ever, which it isn't, and I hate to burst your bubble, I have to recommend Leaps in Evolution, a documentary detailing the evolution of brains and intelligence. But if you just want a good, fun dinosaur story, one of my personal favorites is The Ballad of Big Al, a documentary that follows the life story of a single Allosaurus as it learns to hunt and survive in the Jurassic. I... I'm probably going to try it out sometime, because, yeah, walking with dinosaurs, man, it's part of walking with dinosaurs, and, uh, walking with dinosaurs, you know how great that, that documentary was. Both of these great films have recently been added to Curiosity Stream, a streaming service dedicated to serving up thousands of the absolute best nonfiction titles. Normally, the subscription is $2.99 a month. But CuriosityStream is offering all TierZoo viewers a full month trial for free. Just head to CuriosityStream.com slash TierZoo and use promo code TierZoo to get access. Thank you all so much for watching. This was my longest video to date, and there's no way I could justify the time spent on these videos without the support of my patrons on Patreon and sponsors like CuriosityStream. So huge thanks to both of them. Until next time, good luck out there. So yeah, this is the end of the video. Okay. Um, dude, people just continue to underestimate hadrosaurs, just joke about the T-Rex's arms, and just think that every, every small predator, no, 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 not even a small, every predator can pack hunt, dude, man, Th this video just summarizes what the general public thinks of dinosaurs, you know, uh, that's pretty much it about this video. Thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. See you all next time.